You received a call from an inmate at the Department of Corrections. This call will be recorded and monitored. If you wish to block any future calls of this nature, dial 7 now. To accept this call press 5 now. To decline this call hang up. Well hello there Miss Zombie. Yeah, yep I know. Yeah things uh, things aren't as easy as they used to be but that's uh, that's life and we just have to deal with it day by day. Well that's good. That's good. Uh, keep taking all the classes that you can. Take advantage of all the programs. You know, I'm not too pleased with the way the DLC is treating people out there, but uh, they're a little bit better than last year. I guess you could say that. Okay. All right. That's and and you know, if you if you keep that up, having that drive, having that determination, and when you get outside to the rest of the society, you know, try to blend back into society and stuff. I think you'll you'll still want to keep going. And I've seen a few people that they don't want to go back. They really want to succeed in life. And they want to make it, make something of, them, of themselves. And they'll get out and they'll put forth that effort. And as long as you keep busy, as long as you keep trekking to the future, you'll be fine. And that's it. That's it. Just, uh, you know, and set the example. Uh, go out and... and Talk to people, make connections, and, and let them know that you, you really want to uh, become a, a, a stronger, uh, better person that's not into the crime scene anymore. And Well, yeah, yeah, you know, and there's one in particular. I've really been keeping an eye on her, but she just kind of broke away from me. But, you know, with my recent encounter with her she's uh, at least trying and she's she's not in the best place in the world but when i look at her history and as often as she goes back to prison this is good and and i consider that a positive um move into the future and uh that's what we want to look at that's true. We, we can't look into the future because the future is uncertain. It's a big black dark hole. So we have to really concentrate on present. And uh, right now, things are looking pretty good. You know, everybody's, uh, I mean, she doesn't look too healthy. But I, I do like her, uh, her determination to... Uh, stay out of, of jail and I got a chance to talk to her a little bit about it and so we'll we'll see what happens but for now I'm not even going to concern myself with the future and and in the I know we, we talk about investing in children and they are the future but let's let's face it they're here they're right now and if we're constantly looking ahead we're going to skip what their current needs are going to be we're thinking about a bigger house we're thinking about um a fancy birthday present or Christmas present and the child needs something here and now and and I've learned over the years that teenagers as tough as they may appear they really do like quality time with their parents and movie night uh, family vacations a chance to talk about events at the dinner table these mean a lot to children, and I know we, they look to us for, you have 60 seconds remaining, for guidance, and uh, when you speak to them, it, it makes a difference, and we just need to try to let it set in. Yeah, I know, the, the parent is going on trial for the, the son killing people at a school and i guess in a way that should be the case parents should be held responsible and in the state of washington they're they're going to try to use juvenile records and stuff as something you have 30 seconds remaining stays locked up and they can't use it against them as an adult you know back when you were a teenager you broke into a convenience store and, and use that against them 
And, and yeah, we're watching the laws. We're talking to people. We're keeping it going. And I'm glad you're doing the same thing. Set a good example. We need to work with uh, our resources and keep them going. Good, good. Keep the suggestions coming. Well, thanks for the call. And Thank you for using Inmate Call. Goodbye. Hello. Welcome to AQS Inmate Call, and I am your host, Joel Wilborn. And in this episode, I want to discuss, I guess, the, the state of um, current affairs. Let's put it that way. I know a lot of us want to talk about the future and uh, making investments and planning ahead. And that's good. That's something we can do. But we can't spend too much of our time concerned about the future because it's it's like going to a celebration and people have their cell phones out and they're taking videos and snapping pictures. And then... The next day they're thinking about well, what exactly happened yesterday and they can look at the videos and stuff but there's things that went on that they missed because like we did before uh, cell phones and stuff we could go to an, uh, an event and just enjoy everything we could see all of the the different uh, facets of them the activities and, and take in the moment because it will never be routine and um, I, I fear that's what's going to happen now. People are just going to be so caught up in uh, events outside of what's happening around them. They're just going to miss a big chunk of their life. And we just need to slow down, take it easy, just like the old saying, stop and smell the roses. And there's a reason behind that. Take some time to spend time with the, the family, with friends. Uh, maybe look back on the past. It's not going to change. The past will always be the same. Um, talk about things that made you happy. The more people talk to you, the more they learn that you can learn from them. The more uh, you talk to people, they can learn from you. And um, you want to know the people that you're around, you know, in case something happens and, and investigators are talking to you. It's like, oh, this person would never do that, or it doesn't sound very characteristic. And then there's also cases too where a person tends to turn towards suicide, <clears throat> or they get depressed, or maybe they want to go out and harm somebody. You'll you'll see these because you know this person after spending time with them and communicating with them and that's what we want to do and I think if we're going to invest into our future and make our lives uh, appear better even though they may not be but at least give that appearance and, and give that hope give that drive we need to concentrate on the present what's going on right now and Children who are in high school, they're learning. Let's make sure they have all the resources they need to, to get a proper education. Let's make sure that um, resources are not lost or overlooked. You know, there's a lot of stuff that's out there that we're just not utilizing. We're ignoring them because for some reason we think they're not significant anymore. But basic math, uh, it's like a, one thing they're talking about is cursive writing. Children in school just aren't learning cursive writing. And uh, a lot of us take that for granted. But just imagine writing everything out and there's no cursive. And pretty soon nobody's going to know how to read it. Nobody's going to know how to write it. And that's something we don't want to lose in certain languages. You know, there's a lot of Native Americans out there that are thriving because they they have close-knit families and, and they, they preserve their history and then there's some that are just losing things like certain skills on, on how to make uh, certain items you know the Native Americans 
way back when, they pretty much made everything. They hunted for their food. They knew how to preserve the food. They knew how to make weapons, clothing, how to、uh, plant crops, and these are skills that are are essential for us. And even though a woman might say, "I don't need to be making a, a rug," maybe her children, maybe her cousins, maybe somebody in the family would like to learn that skill. And maybe make a living on the side, or make a living perfectly,、uh, you know, 100% with that. It's just that they should at least be given that opportunity. And there, and and when people realize just how important little things like that are to their life, they're more apt to、uh, promote it and keep it going. And if we let kids teach kids, if we let current events get caught up with children, look what what's going on. There's a lot of stuff they're learning that we don't even know about. Children look up to us as adults, and they really trust us. And we're supposed to guide them and help them to survive. And I、uh, I hate to see a lot of parents going to. To prison or going to court, they're being held accountable for a child that does something terrible, like commit a mass murder. If you're paying attention to the children, there's no guarantee that you can help them prevent committing a major crime. But we could at least. Show them that we care. Show them that we are looking out for something, and asking the right questions. Not invading their privacy or not、uh, controlling them. Just being there and caring. And that's a skill that we could teach them. Because if we're thinking, "Well, I'm going to trust my kid. I don't want my kid to hate me. I, I, I'm working too much," and you don't pay attention to them when these. Children grow up to be parents and have children. They're not going to be paying attention because, in their mind, paying attention to my children isn't part of raising them. It isn't something that's important. But children whose parents are part of their life as parents, and siblings that are a part of their life as siblings, it does make a difference because we know what's going on. We, we, Listen to them. We guide them. We correct them, and we know the limits, so we don't overstep the boundaries. And that's definitely a, a good thing. And I think that would help protect our our、uh, communities a lot more than taking away some rights that we have. When you look at it like this, you know if you're Living in a community, and your house is constantly burglarized, people just breaking in and out of there. You could go out and put stiffer sentencing on home invasions, or, or you could go out and maybe、uh, put special requirements on pawn shop owners or, or secondhand stores, so that、uh, if Stolen goods come into their possession. Maybe they could be held responsible and go to go to court for it. We could do that, but it's not going to stop people breaking into homes. There's a reason they do that, and if we don't know the reason, then personally we may build up security, put cameras around there, put alarms in the system, get guard dogs, or have a neighborhood watch and keep. Looking out for the people, we could do all of that quite easily, and、uh, it's it's showing that we're we're taking a more、uh, positive approach and a more active participation in preventing the crime to our home, and、uh, in. 
the bigger picture, we could do the same thing. We could build up the resources. We can increase security. We don't want to defund police. We don't want to cut back on the budget of our, our uh, EMT people or, or uh, firefighters and uh, community workers and stuff. We don't want to cut back on their budget. We don't want to lay them off. We want to make them feel that they're important. Make them feel that they're contributing to society, and then get the word out. Put uh, public service announcements out there. Put uh, posters in the school of numbers people can call if they're feeling like committing suicide, or if they're feeling like they should harm somebody or run away from home. I know in the state of Washington, if the parents don't want the children to uh, get a sex change. The children have a right to go to a, a safe house, so to speak, and, and these people who take them in, even the police officers and law enforcement, don't have to tell the parents. And the parents can be sitting there, where's my kid? While well, the officials are saying, oh, your child is safe, but your child wants to get a sex change and there's you, you nothing you can do about it. I think that's overstepping a little bit. Because the parents should have rights. And if we start showing children that they're independent from their parents, that they don't have to listen to their parents, why would the parents take an active role anymore? And building the family, to me, will help prevent a lot of hardship in the future. But we have to invest in that now. There's really not too much we can do about the family in the future, but there's a lot. There's 100% stuff we can do about them right now. Look in on your neighbors. Have community events. And if somebody, you know, there, there's times that uh, a family, maybe a family of three, husband, wife, infant, child, and maybe the food stamps were lost. Maybe somebody traded them in for drugs, or, or maybe there was some kind of hardship where the baby is, is suffering. This person shouldn't feel any guilt going to a food bank or going to a church or a community center or even a, a local politician and, and, and simply saying, I'm short money for my child, we need clothing. And, and a lot of times, communities come together and help out. And I think those who like to donate should be encouraged to do that. And with cell phones and stuff, it's a lot easier to do. And those that just want to take advantage of the situation shouldn't feel guilty about it. It's just that I don't think that should go overboard. We shouldn't pay for everything and take care of the person. We don't want to enable the person to commit crimes. If we discover that there are are drugs involved, maybe the person can get some assistance and not feel that guilt. But in order to understand your community, because every community is different, we got to get out and got to talk to the folks. We got to uh, make the resources available and seeing which ones are being uh, utilized. I know uh, people getting out of prison, they're concerned about finding a place to live and finding a job. And um, a lot of them even more concerned about getting their education, continuing that. And so I know of resources in my county that I can take these folks over to and say, this person just got out of prison, is having a tough time finding a, a or getting established. What can we do to help? And let's face it, if you're willing to help people, then there's people that's willing to help you. And a strong community, strong family, reaching out, listening, uh, providing. These are things that will help us live in a safe community, help us overcome these, these violent offenses out here. And people that are in prison, they'll tell you the same thing. Not 
we, we, we made things against the law, murders against the law, yet there's still murder occurring. Uh, car theft is against the law. Uh, Washington is now, uh, the state of Washington is now coming out with a law against animal cruelty. Because a lot of times people just treat them as property and harm them, and these poor animals don't speak for themselves. Now they're getting to the point where people who are, are convicted of uh, cruelty to an animal could get federal offenses. And so uh, this kind of network and community participation can help us to unite and we need to find ways to unite instead of separating people by gender separating people by race or by religious beliefs or political beliefs we need to be a united world a united country is fantastic we can go beyond that too and we'll just bring everybody closer together it's easy to do that and I hope People will reach out rather than run away and hide. And we need to get children out to understand what's going on. Look, I, I would say a park, instead of having all park officials and, and state employees work on these parks, they could actually reach out to high schools and grade schools have these people come out and volunteer and they can provide you know t-shirts hats uh, snacks maybe a meal and together we'll go out and clean up the park make repairs uh, it's just like the uh, way back when 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 the community would get together and they would use their they, were, they would use their resources to build houses for folks and, and clear land and snow show uh, shovel snow and um, I knew neighbors that would be willing to look out for the kids. And uh, we can keep that going. We don't, uh, we don't need to uh, ignore folks, especially those who are reaching out. So I hope uh, you talk to your family, your friends, give everybody a hug. And try and understand your community. And things aren't going to improve if you just sit around and wait for them to happen. They're only going to improve when you get out and do something. The person who can control your life is you. The person who can improve your life is you. And the person who can, who can make a difference in the community is you. You can make a difference. And uh, we work better when we work together. So I'm, I'm asking that you just reach out and there's not a you can't solve all the problems and in many cases there's really not too much you can do but you fail if you never try you fail if you don't do something and a lot of times we don't even know what we do we could say something to somebody they could turn them away from a life of crime and never ever know it and then there's times that we could and find out that we made a difference. Or we could do something and others could imitate it. And then we have a new tradition going on. But we need participation. And if you want to preserve your future, if you want to improve your, your future and make a better future, let's concentrate on the here and now. Well, go out and have yourself a wonderful day and make beautiful memories for tomorrow.